Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the PowerPod. Thank you all for supporting the last episode. Do you know Do you know Luke Joyce? Do you know who that is? No. Had him on. He's a... Uh, Luke's going to be pissed. Uh, no, he's uh, he does like uh, TikTok content, wears like a blue jacket, does all the window washing. He's like an entrepreneur, he does lots of window washing stuff. But uh, thank you all for supporting the last episode. Everyone really enjoyed it. Obviously, Connor didn't. Uh, <laughs> I still have to go home now. <laughs> Listen to that. The car Luke, I, I'm not starting a beef, but like Luke is pissed. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so actually, I was I do a little bit of research on my guests and try to see like previous podcasts they've been on. I saw you were on two very different styles. You were on Everywhere We Go, yep, and then you were on Hard Chats and Hard Hats, yeah, very actually. very different vibes. Yeah, 100%. you had like uh, on Everywhere We Go. I'm not can't have your woman's name on top of my head, but she uh, she she got in there with you. She really did. She, she went got, deep on me. Did you know that was coming? Uh, yeah, because I had to look at her page and see what she did before. Is she like a, a relation to a, a, Like, did you know her or her family no, or anything like that? she's actually related to Darren. Oh, fair fucks. Yeah, yeah. No, I, she she got, really went at me. I thought, yeah. I, was, I thought I was in trouble for the whole podcast. And she did, uh, funnily enough, it was interesting to see, like, obviously the higher chats when I, I could get fuck all out of that. Like, there was no, like, no, it was a bit of crack. I'm not quite sure what you were fucking chatting about. That's just the, the lad style. But then uh, on the other one, like when we, I'd love to finish somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. A little bit of crack, learn something more about you as well. But I don't want to recycle the same questions. I'd love to get you some, give you some new aspects to go Absolutely. on as well. well I, haven't done, I haven't done a podcast now. I don't think, I think that was over nearly two years ago now anyway as well. Should Would it be? I'm a year and a half, two years? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, uh, 10 months, I think it went up. Did you go loads of scrolling through all the posts? Oh, yeah, yeah. I went back <laughs> to your YouTube you. channel, man. Like, oh, it, got, <laughs> it got real, like, it got very real. Uh, so I guess that there's two questions. Number one, I'm very interested in what your day looks like, day to day. Yeah. For example, what did you do today? Today, woke up at half seven to collect Darren, to bring Darren. Darren had the dog last night. I got a new dog, Bingo. Nice. So he is a mini dash hound and he's very, very needy. So you can't leave him at home because I have another dog then as well. So yeah, I had to yeah. drop him to Darren last night, collect Darren this morning, collect the dog, drop the dog home, bring Darren into town, town back to the house. From there to Dundalk, I view the new unit up there in Dundalk. This, the car hates me. The car despises me. From Dundalk back to the house, from the house down to Kulak Village, from Kulak Village then into, down to Kulak Nasty. I'm fucking exhausted already. I know, yeah. stop the yeah. thought of it now as well. And all, all the tolls as well. The tolls don't accept the phone tapping yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. So we're scrambling at the car looking for change, nearly getting out of the car looking at the seats for change. Dig, digging in the back of them. Oh, like. nightmare. And then from there then collected Nasty, went to Charlestown, recorded the video there, went into Dunn's, recorded a funny video in there. Mm. From there then back to the house to edit the video. The video's up. I saw it. And now I'm here. You're like, it, it's mad to see. Uh, I think you said on the, well, the podcast, the Everywhere We Go one, you, you, you're, you were, you're really happy when you are able to just like control your day, zipping from place to place, listen to your own music and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, you, you generally enjoy that. So even though it's, it's mad stress, are you like, fuck, is, if this is my day today, it's still unreal. Oh no, well, yeah, I genuinely moan 24 seven. Darren's the one that says the blunt end of it in the car, he give out nonstop, there's traffic. Even me, it was like two minutes away from around the corner here. And I was like, I can't be late. Yeah, the tra no, late. the traffic thing would be wild. Like that, yeah. that would drive me mad. Gets so like me. if somewhere in the middle of town and it gets onto you, like, no, like I want to get out to, can yeah, I get me out to swords or something very like that? Very rarely yeah. I'm in town and every time I'm in town, I'm like, get the dart in, save me the parking. I'm like, nah, I'll just, I'll just drive in. But um, no, I'd be a moaner, no doubt about it, but I wouldn't change it for anything. Like I, I hate sitting at home. Even if I'm at home for 10 minutes, I'd stick on the telly. I wouldn't be watching telly. I'd be working on the phone or editing something or creating something and then looking for something to do. Do you, do you like to earn your, your relaxation time? Or you're like, so if, if you've worked your whole off, Monday um, to Friday and then you get like a couple hours on a, on a Saturday evening or Sunday evening do you enjoy I, that yeah, or like you I still enjoy, no I enjoy my time out and stuff like that and it, but even if I'm hungover or dying a slow death on a Sunday or something like that I still have to do something mm. I wouldn't be those person that would be like that type of people that type of person that would be able to just sit in bed all day and just feel sorry for myself that would add to the hangover and everything and, else are you one of those people that like you're if you're hung over you're like fuck man someone else is yeah exactly hard. exactly yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're not doing anything someone else is working as well there's plenty of competition about so you just have to be on top of the game you know or else I should be smarter, record two videos the, next, the day before mm. and hold on to one, but I'm just so, everything's now, now, now. Yeah, you know? we, we had we had Luke Choice on, as I said, and he uh, he was talking about holidays and booking holidays. And he was like, man, I, I, haven't, I hadn't enjoyed a holiday my first six years in business or whatever. So I'd just be away and someone would text me, this gone wrong, this gone wrong. Oh, and no. I'm, I'm off my phone the whole time. And now he hired a GM and it was his first like enjoyable holiday last year. So it's All just right. interesting to see how people can like. When you pass over mm. and it's so hard to let go of something, but once you do, I have a person kind of taking control of the buddy cup as well now mm. for me. You now a very close person to me, so I trust her an awful mm. lot, but 
you have to let go to have some sort of time or stress off your back or to deal with stock. You'll, you can't you'll be, explode, man. You can't be going everywhere. And I did it for so long and I was like, oh my God, I'm like absolutely exhausted. I have no time for anything. And do you kind of learn like where you're most valuable then to yourself? Like where you're, where you're good, where you're bad. Do you know what I mean? Like what, like you're obviously killing the content, marketing, all that kind of stuff, but it, there's other parts to running the Buddy Cup and stuff, stock inventory. Oh yeah, kind of definitely. Things, the know? Buddy Cup has kind of fell, fell behind and that's being brutally honest. It has, be, but it's just came with, so much pressure on the food side of things and I, and I adore doing the food things. I've kind of thrown a blind eye to the buddy cup. Mm. Now, everything's going well there. It's still, it's still great. I'm still getting a wage out of it, but mm. I know that if I did put a little bit more time in and I always say, I'd say week in, week out, I want to de dedicate a full day to mm. the buddy cup, but then it comes to that day and then there's, there's six other things on on that day or I'm going somewhere else or I'm doing something else and it's just like, ah, I'll go there for 10 minutes when I should be there for two, three hours creating yeah. videos for it, you know? So I'm like making the money down the food, which is going into my pocket, of course, and then obviously creating the money for the business owner. But if I create the video for the Buddy Cup, how much more money could I get out of that? Or how much further could it go and expand, you know? How, in just in terms of, this isn't even where I was planned to go, but the uh, the coffee industry in general, a bit low, coffee's all over the fucking place since COVID. Yeah. As an industry, how tough is it to kind of like pull a profit from that with like costs going up and all? Do people kind of, I just, I've talked to a number of people who, who are in that industry or want to like bring that kind of part of, part of their business. And then they're like, you get in there. It's hard to fucking find the, the profit in there when you're trying to be competitive with price and stuff like that. Yeah, you know? when we only talking about this someone today um, saying it was 4.30 for a coffee or something yeah. like that. And it was just like an old flat white. Mm. Ridiculous. Air coffee is probably the cheapest in the market. And I probably should actually look at it and mm. say, well, my prices should go up here. But <laughs> I'm charging 45 cents a coffee here. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But um, there, there's serious competition, serious competition, especially in the likes of town. But I think the suburbs area, there is, there's gaps in the market there where you can fill. And if you find something like we started off by doing the hot chocolate, that's where we, mm. we make all of the money on all of the sales would be on the hot chocolate. So, and then we kind of blossomed into more so coffee. And then it, again, I took my eye off with the hot chocolate. So I have to get back into that. Well, like it, it's tough because uh, obviously you went from the trailer situation. Yeah. Is that a much easier process than the brick and mortar, like an actual location in terms of like yeah. things to deal with? Yeah. I was definitely lucky, obviously, with what was going on with, co on with COVID. So it's just like, I had nothing else to do. I had a bit of savings there, bought a trailer, started the name. I had no location. No staff, no experience in yeah. making a coffee. Didn't even like, I, I was like, right, I'll just boil and just stir the coffee and yeah. I drink that. And then next of all, one to two and then into shops and then just building on it online. Mm. Like if you don't, if you don't, if you open a coffee shop now, you definitely have to have the marketing behind you and you have to have some sort of it's everything man, vision. marketing. Yeah, now, yeah, like there's no point putting a radio ad out there saying a new coffee shop's gone here or even in a paper anymore. Like people still do it. I know, yeah. I know, I know. Even in like the oil, like the oil like and stuff. Do you ever see the bins? Yeah, I do. I 200 do, yeah. euro for a week there. Like, yeah. like what? It's mad that uh, we're in this kind of like phase right now where marketing is like totally changing and like you're, I'd say they're all looking at the fucking buddy cup being like, fuck, we need it. Yeah. Like Connor Ryan. We need someone who's just going to market the shit out yeah, of this. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. And especially then if you do own it, it's a big then gamble. Like obviously people that set up a business and would text me to say like, I'm about to set up a food company. Can you come out and promote it? I'm like, well, I do it for a living. This is my rate. And then they're like, we don't have the We don't have that sort of money. And then I always then kind of feel bad that like, right, I can't, I can't do it for nothing because it's my living. And then again, like if, if you look at it from the other shop, like the shoe on the other foot, if I do come in and promote your food place, you're going to make your money back. But just the business owners don't kind of get that, but that's, you have to let go. Of. You're also like, it, it's kind of interesting. I, I'm in a, a similar, smaller boat than you are obviously, but like the videography side, I have a load of mates who would come on and be like, Hey, I can't really afford that. Can we do something about it? Mm -hmm. And I always felt I'm, I'm semi undercutting all the clients that I have exactly. that do pay me. Yeah, so like yeah. what, what's the premise I'm setting if I'm doing you a favor? Like where, where does, where's the line there? Do you mm -hmm. know? So I think it's, it's so interesting. Everyone's like, there's this weird buzz online about people not wanting people to make money online and kind of like, why aren't you doing it just for the love of it before you realize, lads, there's wages to be paid, there's, there's rent to be paid, all those kind exactly. of things. Exactly, yeah. You want to invest in new equipment as well then, you, you know. You want to like, make the thing bigger, you want to exactly. open another location, there's yeah. more feed, more people come on, more wages, all those kind of things, there's tax. Uh, yeah, people just, people love to have them on, but we'll chat about that later. I, uh, I did a big dive on your social media, as I said, yeah. and uh, one of the videos that, like, it might have been your first video, was you surprising your ma when you got home. The Do you remember the one? Like, one oh, before, from Canada. Came, yeah, 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 yeah. And like, obviously, straight from that, like off the bat, it's clear you're, you're extremely close with your parents Definitely. and your man in particular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of when you posted that first video, was the hope you're like, I'm going to be a fucking YouTuber? Or was your hope, did you always see social media as a way to promote business as, as a marketing tool, like down the line? Always seen it as business sort of things. Fuck, really? Definitely. It's interesting, always, yeah. Always seen it as business sort of things. Always seen it as sales, promoting, advertising, marketing, always, always seen it as that. Mm. But obviously with the YouTube sort of thing, it was very hard to get that across. So the YouTube was just kind of like, a, that was like a passion or like a side mm. side thing to be kind of doing. Yeah. So, but still building your brand, do you know Absolutely, what I mean? it's yeah. another avenue as well. And if you're not involved in all of these avenues, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, like 
you're missing the corner to be covering that's going to come you, across all of them you'll you be know? left you'll be left behind exactly exactly so when you're uh when you're first starting the youtube and you see like it was there anyone any uh, rob maybe definitely rob, rob yeah rob yeah. um sick of talking about rob in this podcast oh, but he's real is he inspired fucking you're half the country yeah, yeah, yeah. Commission, um, i wish his mate max tuning as well i used to watch his yeah, yeah. Vlogs i still watch max yeah i actually i couldn't find it i couldn't that, that's funny enough i remember the second name there i couldn't remember a second name a while back and i wanted to see how his uh, sour strips were doing oh, used to be hooked on that low and up mate yeah they're doing he just put up he puts up tweets all the time about how many they've sold and he was like we did 250,000 units over the last weekend, like the holiday weekend. So like, yeah, Cyrus Scripps is going to be like the brand. It's crazy. Like that. It just like, and I used to always watch that. And then I'd be thinking to myself, like getting the subway then to work on that. Like what ideas can I bring out? Like, you know, mm. and I was like, side, or like side strips or something, like something completely knocking him off. There's no, like, there's no limit. Which no, the nice not. thing about like marketing now and products with influencers is there's no line with anything. No. So like you could get into, ah, fuck, I'm going all backwards on my like, questions, but this is interesting. What other, like, what other industries do you find intriguing? Not necessarily that you'll get into, but is there other industries you look in and you're like, that's um, a, it's an interesting one I could fit into? Uh, the e-commerce as well, an mm. awful lot I've been thinking about. You know, I'm doing a course starting next week in UCD. Mm. Um, it's for Photoshopping and mm. like all about Adobe and learning how to edit and create graphics and stuff. That's something I always wanted to do. Mm. That side of things as another business to be able to create graphics for people. Mm. Um, I'd love to learn how to use the camera then as well. Mm. And then I feel like down the line then if I have the camera kind of sorted, whereas I can take proper professional photos of food, have the graphic design and then create some sort of marketing agency whereas like i could create the proper photos for your field and then i'll give them instagram photos the as whole, well the whole process whole please. process but as, as a side hustle sort of thing i've tried everything else and there's been so many failures as well so i've tried t and as a business i've tried my own clothing as a business and um, both failures no problem i think everyone that's setting a business up has to stumble across failures to all, keep moving all, on all, all you know businesses right now like yeah is, is fucking yeah failing it's trial and error trial and error but it's the it's the fact, fact that you don't um don't give up and always have something else in the back of your mind or else just not it's weird like not give 100 percent to one thing mm. i think you don't have i don't think you should do that nowadays i think you should give yourself multiple different avenues to kind of go down mm. to make sure you're covering it all off because there's so much going on mm. you know it changes so fast exactly that's exactly that, that's been the kind of mental one is like the the industry's changing so fucking quickly so yeah. i'd rather be in your boat and have a number of different projects you're looking at mm -hmm. then go all in on one and then TikTok gets banned tomorrow and you're like what exactly have I done? Yeah. which is man like people are joking about that but that's very, that could very i know my dad tells me all the time what are you going to do when TikTok and instagram and all goes it's like i haven't a clue well even even you saying there that you turned around a video same day so like you can go into someone and be like hey we'll have this up in two hours oh. like even being able to offer that like i obviously i do videography for a business and like a lot of companies are looking for people like you who can make ugc content of a good standard really quickly yeah understand the trends and like you're able to offer that so like even when like you get we get grief online like obviously i get fucking hate comments and shit as well i see your value so much mm -hmm. from when, when i watch you do it because i understand a brand that opens a, a fast food place no marketing two blokes trying to like do something with food don't know where to start bringing someone like you in who can hit so many different you can do a food-based one you can go in you can talk to them about their marketing strategy all and now if you hone that with graphic design videography like you'll and be an all-in-one and content then so like my yeah. idea i actually won't give my idea away i want to give my idea away jeez no let me just let me just get pen and <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely and I, that's like there's so many people doing so well at doing their own things as well and you'd look at them and say i'd love to do something like that but sometimes you have to kind of step back and say no they're in their own lane as well you don't want to be just going after that because they're doing very well you know we have to like i'm doing this i'd say field reviewing like i'd say 10 years now nearly i, 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 don't, I don't know when i was in toronto i started doing it, and that was yeah. That was six, seven years ago. So I always had a passion for it anyway as well, but everyone just needs to start at the bottom anyway and work their way up. Do you have, um, I shoot a, a series at Wheel Up. Don't know if you know, have heard of it. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, he, you come up a number of times with different guests we have on on that show when we're just chatting about the industry or whatever. Always incredibly positive. Happy days. Thomas, Thomas Cardi, very, talk very highly of you, Mark O'Neill. And then we just had, uh, we obviously did one with Jamie Goonery. Yeah, there. yeah. So your name comes up incredibly positive across the board. Had all legends, yeah. But uh, there's this interesting thing, and I'm kind of learning it now as well, particularly on TikTok in Ireland. In order for videos or anything to do well, yeah. it seems when everything, something's about to kick off and do well on my channel or something's about to gain more views, that's when a huge amount of negativity comes onto my page for whatever it is. It's either the guest or they think I'm a posh cunt or whatever it is. <laughs> not wrong. I was going to say you're very not, posh. Not, yeah. Am I? Yeah, Do I come across posh. Or else it's just true to your headphones here. Darren, let's fucking fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darren's here, by the way. Um, <laughs> no, like I, I actually love, I love that. I love getting like grief like that. I think it's hilarious because like our, our, our friend group, I, I can take the PSI myself, no problem. But it's just, it makes me upset when I see like, ton of faceless accounts leaving real negative shipping like mate what is your oh my game? block list is good. crazy 
what what do you think the mindset like obviously i only get i just think jesus mate how fucking shit must you be your, your day be going to be like you fucking no I, I genuinely just if i see something like that i don't even give it's it a it. second thought yeah blocked gone good luck and then they have to create another account the effort of that to be blocked again yeah like jesus don't give up the day job public it's a uh, it's my obviously you've been in a way longer than me so i'm in like the not in and we're not on the same level but like just to get some of those come in i'm still learning how wasn't the best way to react to that just but, don't engage because that's what yeah. they want to kind they want to annoy you and if you do engage they're laughing they're just saying i'm about to get into him yeah. i'm about to get into this posh cunt and <laughs> do you this is I, i've heard this across the don't call me back. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. i'm a fucking liverpool t- imagine no uh but i have um especially with the, the old lads chat to, all i ever hear is uh, i've never had someone come up to me in person and be like fuck you no i, I hate I, I dislike i'd almost back that more yeah you come up to me and be like i have a genuine issue with you but it's just mad that like if you can take that away i've never heard anyone even like we allow thomas Cardi. thomas Cardi gets mad grief which is like yeah. mad to me because he'll fucking flatten you oh, but like he'd stand he, on will, you. he will kill you <laughs> uh but it's just mad to think uh, it's it's obviously you're more experienced in it but uh yeah in terms of dealing with the the negativity and stuff it just we were talking about something today though as well we were we were out and asked the end but just explaining that um like the amount of people that look down on irish people and in the uk mm. no one like everyone supports each other over there mm. it's weird and it's just like everyone just be so jealous about everyone else and just gives everyone grief non-stop and i'd say everyone that's like online and an online presence, Jake having it, Ben, Nasty, myself, Wheelow. I'd say everyone gets it. Bearpod. Bearpod, of course, as well. I can't forget that. Like, but Kieran O'Connor did a podcast. Do you see that podcast? No. Do you follow him? No. He owns Soul Cafe and Soul 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 Food as well. Um and he texts me today saying he did a podcast and that he said he's never done anything like that before. And the backlash and grief that he's getting off the back of it. And he's like, oh, it's getting to me all day. Yeah. I know for such a positive person and a smiley person that's doing so much for charity, mm. he does all these swim runs, he was in the paper doing all this. I think it was for PA the House, wasn't it? Like he's such a nice what, Yeah, what a prick. Like Yeah, like how and how how on earth could anyone like say anything smart about fuck this person? You, fuck like, you changing the community for the exactly, better. Exactly. Like, like, you know, yeah. but the fact that he said that I was getting to me, I was like, Jesus, like mm. if only people knew what like if he didn't have thick skin, what it's actually doing to you on the other side of the screen. Like Well, it's it's interesting you brought up, you mentioned a load of people there, all blokes. Yeah. There's something do you feel like, it, it, especially in Ireland right now, female influencers, cruising it, big brands, all the big supporting, you go yeah. girl, and then the blokes, it's either if when you're small and like one of the people, they love you to bits, and yeah. then as soon as you as soon as you get in and you've done a fucking, I don't know, I don't know, like not, you get in with a few bigger brands like Nasty with Abacabra and stuff, yeah. then it starts coming in. It's like they don't, don't fucking try and get higher up than us, you're, yeah. anything like that. Uh, do you think that's the case with like males male and females? I see, I seem to see females doing like huge, like pennies collabs, like all these huge brands yeah. are working with the girls and it's all positive. I don't know what that is, but it does seem to be the case. Just think, I think girls are just way more sport, sportive of girls. Yeah. You know, and I just think lads are too, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too hard of a lad to support him and all. Let's just call him something online here off my fake account. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah but I have a Steven Gerrard tattoo. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. make it, what, what's the here? I just, yeah, it's mad. I wonder if, uh, even when you said there, like, where's your, especially on the social media, everyone wants, like, as much access as possible now. Like, and, like, people are putting their whole lives online. Mm-hmm. Obviously, in the past, you would put, like, relationships online. Have you learned now that you're like, there's, there's a line? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I've really tailed it in. I actually don't know if I've just tailed it in or just massively matured to be honest with you you know um as i've gotten older but yeah no i saw the pros to it most definitely to grow the following mm. on on that side of things i am mm. um, but comes with so much negatives as well so much negatives and the negatives speak way louder than the positives you know it's just when something goes wrong everyone has to be involved mm. everyone has to know why it went wrong where it went wrong and like why did we not see it go wrong like nearly like do you want to, do you want you, to send, send to them why didn't you vlog this exactly you know you but um, the arguments yeah you know, i've just cut it back and reeled it in obviously i have all the woody cups in chopped as well so brian lee would ha- had helped me mentor that out of what I was doing, mm. you know, and just stick to it as like, like your your business, like your life, your income is through Instagram. Mm. It's not your personal life, mm. you know. So if that's why I've cut it back. And um, now I try to. I've even, I actually kind of even struggle a little bit now to kind of go on the stories and talk naturally yeah. without it being about work. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm like I'm not even asked, you know, like and a little p- bit. People kind of talk about that. That's the the key thing with influencers is giving a little bit. I know to it like is. Let them in. Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's and you have to, to find the balance. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and agree. you, I, at least with your work content, like it's fucking delicious food. Yeah, so exactly. Like people yeah. are keen on that no matter what. Yeah. But if you're doing like mentoring shit, it's all business or like fitness stuff. They're bastards for just plugging the shit out of stuff the whole way through. Yeah. And there's no like depth with it. Yeah. So it's I no guess, crack. Yeah, there is no crack. Uh, no diss on Jamie there, by the way. Actually, yeah. No, Jesus Christ, no. Obviously not like uh when you had um obviously with relationships are you single right now 
No. No, you're in one? I'm in a and, relationship. And you're like, well, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to leave that as is. And, as that. Yeah. Full stop. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, interesting. Going back to your, your, your family life early on, I was surprised and like impressed to hear that your your parents actually fostered kids when yeah. you were born. Yeah, we're actually think, speaking about this over on holidays as well, yeah. I think that's like fucking wild. Yeah. Just in like a, it's just something you don't hear every day, especially no. in Ireland, but it's like... Is that extinct now where what's going on? No, like, well, you just never hear of it anymore. Uh, not big people lob a kid in now and again, but it's not, yeah. it's definitely, that's when, when I heard it, I was like, it's so fucking interesting just yeah. to, to hear that. I was a mad LC. Because I have, um my my dad remarried and now I have my sister, my, my half sister, yeah. and uh, she's an only child. And right. so we're kind of figuring out, I grew up with my brother, so we had a very different kind of childhood. What was what was growing up as an only child like in terms of your experience? Did you enjoy, did you find, feel like semi-loneliness, stuff like yes. that when you were a lot younger? I actually don't know if it was maybe me that kind of put the feelers out to probably foster, you know? Mm. Obviously me being lonely and stuff like that. And then then when it came, boy God, that I don't want anyone else in the house playing my games. Yeah. Do not touch them. Don't touch them. Like I'll be watching a film and he'd want to watch a film and the other room was like, no, I want to watch that film yeah. right now. Like I'm watching, I was actually throwing this one off to watch that film. Luckily enough, I live in a cul-de-sac, so there's plenty of kids outside. I was let out all the time. I actually just probably booted out the door saying, mm. do not come back in until those streetlights come on sort of thing, you know? We we had the golden era of childhoods. Now looking yeah. back, like that early, like some mates might have a Nokia when you're 13, just exactly. playing football all day. Yeah. If if you're looking for your mates, look for where all the bikes are. Exactly. That's look like for that the football. Buzz. Like I've... There's you know, not people now looking for where the vape smoke is and going more, for the vape. Like. Man, more and more, I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, man. I remember being in my state and being like, lads, we're playing the fucking other state in football today. Yeah. And it's going to be crazy. And like, we'd all be fucking buzzing, walking over. Like, that, that was the bit. And then we're like, yeah, early to bed. Or then like lights would turn off, leg it back for fish fingers, back out again, <laughs> football. And now it's all... Uh, it's all if it, like if, uh, fucking nine year olds watching TikTok looking at twerking videos and all like yeah. what is going on? Kind of the goose jackets. It's, the, oh, it's, it's going to be very interesting. This intimidating. Next, yeah. Don't so we crossed the road, like. <laughs> oh yeah, don't man, don't around here. <laughs> yeah. Little, 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 even even in like the subway that like I'll be in line, the load of kids are coming. I'm like, oh fuck. Yeah. Like, the, oh, the no. kids, are, kids are ten. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> are we? Yeah. It's interesting. Just uh, this. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see how this generation of kids grows up and if. Yeah. Like I know I couldn't have gone through social media. Like we had Bebo and I couldn't handle that shit. Like I know someone I know. would leave like. I don't think you, I don't think you're very nice. I'm not hurting you on Bebo, and I'd be like, Jesus. God. I know, and I used to be such an addictive personality as well, or addictive, mo- addictive mindset. Yeah, whereas I want to collect uh, collect things and scores. So I always wanted my Snapchat score to be ridiculous, like so, mm. it, like Snapchat and everyone and anyone, and mm. uh, to get a Snapchat score. But I'm just touching on Bebo. I used to collect, you know, where you get your loves. Yeah, yeah, so I think hearts, I had yeah. like, you know, on Valentine's Day it was unlimited loves. Mm. So I'd be sitting there with my mates getting collecting the loves up to like forty thousand, yeah. and then um, my ex at the time then hacked my Bebo and deleted. And I was absolutely feeling. Imagine how heartbreaking it is. I had to start at the loves from the bomb. Yeah, and you, you lose your other half and all this shit. Like it's on the other half, I haven't even gone. Like, yeah, you do you know, remember all the pictures and the memories? all the arrows you used to do? Like you'd have like one block and be like, best oh, mate, yeah, yeah, ride yeah. or die. <laughs> haven't, haven't thought, I had a few mates and I haven't talked to any of them in 10 years. So <laughs> see you at the end, bro. It's funny, still like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, actually, uh, I need to reach out to that. I do a little recoup. Like it's <laughs> get them some, on the podcast. Some wild characters, man. Really? You know, so when you look back at like your, your crew mates when you were younger, you're like a few of them. You, you know, when you run into a mate you haven't seen and like, 15 years at like a club and he's 28 now and you know, I was like mate I remember you when you were 15 and fucking pissed yourself on the green and now like you're a fully grown man like it's so interesting yeah, to see text you back saying I'm gonna stab yeah. you the next time I see you do you, do you get uh, you like, yeah <laughs> I, I, I used to get a bit man I was terrified of confrontation when I was younger like, <laughs> I remember there was, there was a remember when people used to be like he's a uh, it, like someone would be like yeah by the way I'm, I'm coming for you and I see you and you get like that text through a mate oh, like yeah. this guy's pissed off at you because you chatted to his his cousin's girlfriend oh, in in touch and I'm like oh, I'm, I'm fucking dead I can't go out and uh, now I'm, I'm sure with social media and stuff that's just like 10 times more because you can get it whenever you want it's, yeah. it's fucking wild it's instant um, in terms of when uh, when they were bringing like foster kids in and stuff how did they pr- like position that to you like how, what was your understanding of that just we have someone who's going to come and stay for a while yeah basically come yeah. and stay for a while um it definitely wasn't the full story anyway of kind of what was going on in their own home, you know. I probably would have went over my head anyway regardless. But yeah. I just remember the same person that we used to get. His name was Luke. And um, I, th- I think we got him three or four times. I can't actually remember. I know we did get other people as well. Mm. But um, Luke always comes to mind as well because I think we had him a fair amount of time. Mm. And he only actually lived down the road from my, from the house that we were in that we're in right now. And... Um, the house that we're in right now. We're still in the same house. Like, still in the same house. I moved around. Starts crying. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I just remember them saying that we're just going to have someone staying here for a while. And um, you have to be very good to them. You have to mind them, mm. look after them. And I just remember, remember the person coming in being so like just rattled. Oh man, rattled yeah. like. And obviously, it's like 
it's like a puppy getting taken away from his mommy. Like, yeah, you know, could you imagine just, the yeah. rever reversing the situation? I know. Like, yeah, and obviously this, at our age, you can kind of reflect at the time. You're like, who the fuck? Yeah, I know. So give him one of your football jerseys. Which one? No. Yeah, Which I one? know. I had to be nice because I actually seen the kind of the fear in him a little yeah, bit yeah. and just been like, he's getting dropped into a stranger's house here. Mm. You know, now obviously I'd say my mom and dad had to go and meet his, or whoever was yeah. dealing with the fostering and stuff like that to make sure it was suitable for the family and that. But mm. when he came to the house, just seeing how shook and all he is, I did look after him for a while, but then I did the jealous side then mm. came out massively, you know. He had two beds in my room, he usually had one bed, so he was staying in my room. Mm. Then obviously the toys came into play. Yeah. So we'd have our own toys, but like he'd have his toys, I'd have my toys, my mum would look after him and then I'd want his toys, so it was just carnage. You gave him like a raggedy tennis ball. Like, oh you, yeah, you, you, you know have, what? You'd have like Beyblades over in the corner. Like. <laughs> you can have this. Um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Looking back on it, it's mad that it, the amount of things that you forget when you're younger mm. and you'd always remember that. But it's, it's, it's such a, like, obviously a huge compliment to your parents to be like, a lot of people, especially right now as parents, will be so worried about, I need to just make sure my kid's all right. But the yeah. idea to be like, I like uh, we have a loving family here. We have a great situation. I want to like help someone else who's in need, and not even consider I don't know like bringing in another child of their own. They're like I, I I think there's an opportunity to help someone here. Yeah. So like it's just a lovely like sentiment to you to your parents basically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you want to have kids? Do you do you see that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely kind of get that buzz adore off you. Adore kids. Yeah. Adore them. I adore kids. I adore dogs. Um. Yeah. I definitely would love to have. I'd have a huge family. Like a little tribe. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Ducks and all like walking around everything out the back. What do you think in terms of like timelines and stuff like that? Like, you know, when you're 14, you're like, oh, boy, when I'm 23, I'll be married with two kids. And now then you get to 29, you're like, I don't know anything. Um, yeah. yeah, we think about it quite a lot as of late, like, um, but nothing too soon. My biggest goal was to get the house sooner rather than later mm. because I was doing quite well with what was going on. So if it was like, if I hadn't started to save to get that house, and I, that would have been serious pressure on myself now. Mm. Obviously, I'm 29 this year, 30 next year. So if I didn't have the house, I'd be like, God. I, did, I, I heard in the last pod you were talking about that. Has that been sorted now? You were yeah. talking about the shit show you were having trying to get a mortgage and shit. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It was ridiculous to, um, as a sole trader, to get a house. Um, trying to save. You had to save for two years straight, the exact amount. Yeah. Everything. Everyone else, I think, has to save for nine months. Yeah. And you have to show like it going out and out and out into the account. And you just can't touch it. You can't touch it once. You know? It, it's... It's it's mad in this world now, especially like if you have a it, it's it's all very corrupt and we're about to break for the for the first half, but I'm just gonna That's half an hour already. Yeah, man. It flies. Doesn't it? Uh, you know the uh like the buzz, the the tinfoil hat situation is like people are saying they want you in the shitty jobs working for someone else, you pay the the, the amount of tax they want, you've no control over that. Mm -hmm. And to like deter you from being able to buy properties and all those kind of things, they kind of make it more difficult for self-employed people. Definitely. Would you agree? Like, it's 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 fucked to say, but it, it is. It seems to be the case with everyone I'm talking to. People who have a ton of savings, good revenue streams coming in, are the people struggling the most to get mortgages? It's it's fucking mad. Yeah, but it's a saving sort of thing that you, you have to save. You had to, as a sole charity, you had to show how much your tax return would be. Your tax return had to match. Everything had to be in line. Like there was no core cool corners no, whatsoever. No funny business. Like no, no, really no, no, wasn't. No, no, you know, buys, there's no point that, having like. all this cash sitting there. Mm. Makes no sense. You can't buy a house. Well, I'm going to be living with my fucking parents forever. Uh, <laughs> we have a spare rent. No, we actually, we, my, yeah, we have time. Fuck it. I'm living with my uh, girlfriend up in a cottage in Rialto, only like five minutes Rialto? away. Rialto? Yeah, I'll, I'll be, oh. I'm very posh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> fucking it's hard place. Yeah, it's only, it, yeah. only the toughest. Only the toughest can survive. Uh, the, the poshest thing, this will this will round it off nicely. The poshest thing happened to me today. My, uh, my umbrella was stolen from outside the gym. You have an umbrella? I did have an umbrella. It was raining this morning quite heavily. And uh, I don't want to walk over to the gym, get soaking wet. You guys, you can probably tell I work out. And you put and it down uh, and like when you, you put actually, it down, shake I, it This is the poshest thing I've ever done. I left it outside just having faith in humanity that no one's going to steal it. Because I didn't want to wet up the inside of the gym reception and all. And it was stolen. Do you have people on the Irish TikTok scene that you're kind of watching right now and being like, yeah, they're doing a fucking good job. Like they're, they're, they understand the fucking game a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I like what everyone's doing metal was, especially, well, so I wouldn't be looking at the girls doing what they're doing because they're in a different category altogether. But I love seeing everybody do well, yeah. you know, I really do. Um, Who's doing well? I think Nasty's doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. I think Bell Williams is doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. I think Jay Cavanagh is doing very well. I think Kieran O'Connor, who was talking about there that owns Soul Foods is doing extremely well. I hope not missing out on anyone. I think Wheelow's doing it very well. Jamie's doing very well. Shout out Wheelow. Love you. King Gaffo. If you need me, like you need me to straighten someone out, like there's no worries. Uh, are you uh, actually speaking to straighten out? Uh, are we doing? We should get on a little like tag team for one of the UCC scraps. Me and you sort sort, sort something out. You yeah, box the head off. Oh, you know, no, not me, not me. Ver no, I only. I, there's only one person on TikTok I'd, I'd scrap because I think it'd be hilarious. You know, uh, you know, Stalorgan School of Grimes. Sam from Prism. No, 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 no. <laughs> 
fucking want it. <laughs> no, obviously not. We gotta stick together. <laughs> is, he, he's big, big, uh, is he a big fella? What? Is he a big fella? I've never met him in person. I'm a little smaller. Well, oh, you fucking have it then. <laughs> You're fucking dead, mate. Uh, no, with the uh, like, yeah, the UCC thing in general, the fighting. Did you did you enjoy the experience doing Absolutely, it? Absolutely, I enjoyed it. Yeah, um, and it's it, it was great to have the whole show going to charity then as well. Mm. That like it was amazing. It was some set up a thousand people there to watch. Me fall around the ring. Mental. Well, to watch everyone else fight as well before it. Um, I thought it ran extremely well. Mm. There was no trouble at it, no, no nothing outside. Totally enjoyed the training up to it. Mm. And then the night before, I was like, lovely. Still really motivated. The morning, I was out the back with the gloves on. Then I'm an animal. On the way, <laughs> on the way me. there, I was rattled in the car. I was like, oh God, oh good you God. Know, you know he can handle himself a bit like... Ew. Yeah, Ben. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. No, no, I knew, I, I knew going you in there. You hoping to just stay at range? Absolutely. Or? I just wanted to not get knocked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I knew I was going to lose. Yeah. Knew I was going to lose. They're, like, Ben's a boxer. Like, Ben's mm. amazing. Like, so. what, uh, what was the training like? Did you did you enjoy like that, that process it. It in the sport? It was so yeah. intense. So intense. Um, like, it was nonstop. Like, I trained three times a day. Um, like, crazy amount of training. I was yeah. ripped as well. Well, I felt ripped, you know? And yeah. even in your head, like, I felt really good about myself. So, I keep saying I want to go back because I think I... I wish I started boxing when I was younger. Yeah, because no, I think now everyone looking back at 28, like, man, I could have been a killer. Yeah, oh, I could have been unreal. Yeah. Could have been unbelievable. I just think the, the training side of it as well, it's, it's so good for the head and mm. you don't have your phone in your hands. If I go to gym, I spend more time on the phone mm. than even if I'm on the treadmill, on the phone, mm. you know? So I think when you have those gloves on, you can't do anything else and you're just, you're, you have to be so clued in and focused if you are sparring or if you're listening to someone, you can't mess up, like, you know? But, I think yeah. uh, I think I have I think I have a glass jaw, so that's good. I've 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 had a, my two fight experiences. Darren, you'll love this. I've had a, two fight experiences, right? Two physical altercations, and one was in Vancouver. One of my mates was getting kicked out of a, a frat party, and I was kind of like, oh, "We're leaving." I'm very courteous. We're out. Of, we're heading off, boys. And this this small Indian man, like, just darts through the crowd from their side. And just throws like a Hail Mary through like three people. And obviously aiming for my mate who wasn't leaving. And it just like in slow motion, it goes past him. And I just take, just like the whole thing, take it. I was down like 30 seconds. My mate's like pulling me off. Uh, so that was one. Didn't get back at him. Very, very embarrassing. Just went down. They were like, man, he was like, it's like 150 pounds. <laughs> it's like, I, like I, was, I was huge at that, at that stage as well. He was like, no, you went, you went straight down. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, in Ionapa or in, uh, in EOS, we went to an Irish bar. This guy gave me a dig. I, again, went down, sorry, Darren, and uh, got back up, turned around, obviously, be like, crying or whatever, turned around, and then my friend had jumped in to beat the shit out of the guy, and I, in, like, my rage, threw a punch and punched my friend, and he thought a girl had hit him. So, but if prison wants it... Prison wants it, or the fella that has the umbrella, if he mm. wants to come and get it, just go to Rialto. Oh, no, they're tired, tough as nails. I could never steal them bread like that. The rashness. I, I think these these guys are fucking cr you know, criminals. Good writer cup yeah. one, I definitely It was, was a good, it's, a, my, my, it's my girlfriend's auntie's umbrella. Oh, so, shit. Like, it's not, I'm going to have to go buy it. Where do you buy an umbrella? Where do you go? Like, okay, no, it's in Rialto. You'd have these, to get a gold one. These are the questions. These are the questions. Just use, just feel the rain. Go for you. <laughs> uh, in terms of the, uh, like that as a as a concept, like the UCC and stuff like that, do you, do you think that'll continue to grow like Misfits and shit is in the UK? Or do you think it, it kind of needs need someone to kind of take it by the reins. Absolutely. I think Ben's doing a great job with it. Ben's mm. involved with a great crew of people out there involved in it. I just think that for it to take it like a leap to a new level, I think they'd have to get people from the UK over. Like the Irish are going over and like obviously Ben's on Misfits. Keep workers on Misfits now as well. Um, but I think it's going in the right direction, most definitely. You know, I just think he needs to keep at it. And um, like I know they're doing another one already, number three. I think the other one, Number two came very quickly around. Yeah, I think a little bit more we space. Got to be able to build it as build much as it and and build the hype a little bit more. Like I, I seen that they were doing that they were doing face offs. I thought face offs were going to be like and then fighting in about three months. They're fighting the following week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what? Go no way. Just get Wheelow in there throwing his throwing the big, exactly. big loopy jabs. Or if King like, Gaffer finally wants to actually grow a set of balls and fight me, like you know, that's the only person that I go back and actually want to get back in the ring with as well and fully dedicate training to. Just smash, snap that jaw. Like, Absolutely. I like it. Yeah, if I you like get it. out of bed. Yep. He's on next week. No, I've never, <laughs> I've never spoken to him before. Uh, but yeah, if they, if that's on, 100%, I'll, I'll come on undercard, no bother. Like, I need I need some excuse to kind of tighten it up. The rig's getting... I know, and it, especially if it gets to six weeks out and you're fighting in 36 days, you're like, 66 six is 36, 42. Jesus Christ, yeah, 36, six days a week. <laughs> Leave that out. Um, but if you uh, have, thanks everyone <laughs> if you have six weeks to uh, train you have no other excuses to actually get stuck in and train and just like drop everything else and just get stuck in so we'll, we'll see what happens I'm fucking game for it yep uh, now going into something slightly completely opposite uh, 
one thing that you brought up in uh, in the Everywhere We Go podcast, or she mentioned to you, is that you did a you did a therapy session on Clontarf Seafront. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember you or in the podcast you mentioned you didn't enjoy it. I was just interested to see what what were the aspects that you didn't enjoy? Was it the outside? Was it the person? Was it the concept um, of kind of openly just talking about your life to someone you've never met before? Like what I think was I think I was too young. Yeah. Too young to do it. And believe it or not, since then I've done I think I've gone to three or four different different people, different therapists to talk to. Um two over the phone, one in person. And I just I just couldn't click with the person. Mm. And I just felt like it was going in the loop, going in the loop, going in the loop, and then like I've went to these a few few times. I didn't cut it after one, so I'd go a few times. I'd, no problem at all investing in it because it's hopefully something good for me would come out of it. But I just felt like that. I didn't find the right person to do it. Yeah, you know. And I the, over the phone, over the phone was for for me useless because it's over like the phone Zoom, I'm on the phone. It's like a Zoom meeting. Or something yeah, like, but yeah. no, it wasn't even it wasn't even a video call. It was basically through the radio. At one no. stage, I was going through McDonald's drive through yeah. and I was like, "Hold on a second, there now, we're getting a coffee." Like, yeah. like a man's like, "Look at this Lula, extra, extra bacon, please." Yeah, yeah and I was like, oh, "I've ADHD, and I keep making stupid decisions, or I keep messing things up, and I just keep just doing the wrong thing." And the next fall, I'm rolling down the window, I'm rolling down the radio, and all in the background, like, "Hold on, mean? I love this song." What do you mean? There's no milkshakes? <laughs> Sorry, one second. I say your man thought it was an absolute head case, but um, that was kind of a bit of a dark time that I was going through myself, um, and I, f- I feel like I'm out of it. Mm. anyway um in my own head so i just feel like that when it does to come to it again hopefully when i do go back to talk to someone or do something like that again i find the right person to talk to because there's nothing embarrassing about it it's more so genuinely like no, yeah it's gonna turn something that's it, anyway in your head negative into a positive oh man i'm an emotional wreck like <laughs> I, it, it's it's crucial like my family's extremely open when it comes to talking about like feelings i've i see my dad cry twice a week like oh general yeah. bullshit like, like it's just we've always been very open with our emotions so like i 100 percent see the value in being able to chat to someone absolutely especially in your boat man you see you're experiencing shit that not everyone experiences in terms of fame fucking people coming up and chatting to you people having an opinion on everything like it's important mm. to have i like the idea of having someone impartial that you can chat to mm-hmm. i kind of imagine like an older british woman sitting there that i can just chat to exactly about, yeah, yeah all that kind of stuff yeah I and if know. i've even found someone like that that i could click with i'd, I'd travel to that mm. person to go to you know you, but you see the value in yeah. it yeah fair play to you talk to your dad and stuff like that anyway as well i'm sure i was well, there from so. yeah he unloads on he unloaded on me when we were younger like we just yeah. had we, me my brother and my dad like f- went in from we've somewhere between 17 and 19 turned into just like oh we're all best mates ah, deadly. there was never really a for my dad like like cracking the whip in terms of like discipline it was yeah. more like yeah like he goes out with my mates my mates love him like that kind of buzz so mm-hmm. that's that's uh so we've always been very open about chatting like stuff like that's just it's a nice thing to have but i i'll, I'll be going to therapy when i'm older 100 percent. yeah gotta, gotta get the demons out like it's the pressure i think as well um in my own shoes anyway that's uh, i find it hard dealing with pressure so I, like if i don't have if i have like a slow week or something like that god it, like it could be just raining on me constantly mm. like and it, the sun could be splitting the stones but i just feel so much pressure and i'm like what am i doing where am i going mm. the world is falling down around me and then once you sit down take a bit of a breather kind of like regroup mm. or speak to someone mm. whether you're not speaking to myself in the car speaking to darren speaking to your dad speaking to anyone that i know basically i just feel uplifted off the chest and away you go again you know what what kind of things do you do to relax when you're not doing when you're not working like do you have activities you do to kind of even if it's just walking in nature shit like that do you have things that kind of I actually being brutally honest i have nothing yeah absolutely nothing there's no no getting away from it until it, it's done mm. whatever it was doing doing to me you know what i mean like there's mm. just genuinely nothing that's going to solve that you do know? you have a do you have do you keep like a semi fitness regimen stuff with that? obviously you're eating fucking mad grub you need to have like some sort of fitness you also have a metabolism of fucking god like really Mate, if I was eating like you, I this is me, this is my body eating semi well. <laughs> so like, um, I try to, I try to train. Um, obviously I do an awful lot of eating, but and I do put it away. I put away serious amount of food. Darren will back for me on that as well. I put away serious people saying he doesn't eat all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I try my best. And if I do feel anyway sluggish about what I'm do, like, how I feel, mm-hmm. and if I eat too much, I, I do I do a few press ups. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> gotta, gotta keep it tight. I know I do. I go on a few runs here and there to try regroup i'd like to put i like to book things in advance like a holiday something to have to look forward to again so you can't go away get in the pool with a t-shirt on so i have to mm. lose a bit of timber you know what's your uh what's your party buzz right now like are you in a transitional phase between like like do you still did you when you were younger love a party and Absolutely. is it kind of yeah yeah love the party um still do but it's just kind of fizzing out more and more and more as mm. i'm getting older you alcohol's know? killing you like the hangovers yeah. and all that. hangovers and even kind of the group of lads that we have we don't go out as frequent there was obviously a stage when i was 18 19, 18 19 20 21 22 where yeah, it was 23 it was 24 23 uh, yeah. probably up to 24 yeah like it was every week yeah. if not every second week a couple times a week yeah. was back in college yeah. and all it was it, like we took the piss and yeah. like but i i i, I feel I like i took pills there i was like what no, i'm taking pills <laughs> uh 
hi mom uh no there's a there's something i i'm i'm chuffed to feel like i think i partied myself i don't think that i left anything out there in yeah, terms yeah. of like i don't think i missed the the trip away i've done i've done the rotten seven days in ayanapa and just like questioning your life i've done like the canada i went up to ireland done festivals also i really feel like i haven't missed any aspect of it mm. apart from like my jaw swinging in Ibiza. This is the only place I've never been. I don't think I will go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other, like the areas, I, I feel like the party was now, I feel like it's just starting to, it's becoming less and less attractive to me now. Yeah. When you have a Saturday, Sunday off, spending the Sunday just in absolute ribbons, like it just doesn't make sense. I know, know I know. And those Sundays and ribbons, they're not good for anyone. Mm. They're not. But I do, I still, I absolutely love a point. I'd love a point more so watching football mm. now than staying out till oh, half getting, three in the morning. going. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I love I'd love to go for food and a few drinks and that. Now, sometimes it'll go to Toronto South and you could be out on home, by, home by 10. Yeah, ish. Yeah, ish. ish. Um, but yeah, no, that'd be my sort of buzz now. Anyway, I wouldn't be going out and like, I can't remember the last time I was out in town on the night out. Do mm. anyone cannot remember the last time I was out in town? What do you, uh, it's an interesting, I love to talk to everyone I have on about Dublin as a place and like as a city right now. In a weird little spot right now, Dublin, you just mentioned about going into town. Like what, what's your, what's your general feeling about Dublin and Ireland as a place right now to live? Um, I'm happy enough with it to be completely honest with you. Yeah, but town wise, on the other hand, I'm, I'm I wouldn't go into town. Mm. I wouldn't go to, I wouldn't be pushed to go into town more so of like if what could happen in town. Mm. Yeah, I always have that in the back of your head. Like, like you, your mom, my mom would probably say, "Be careful if you're going to town," yep. but she wouldn't say, "Be careful if I was going somewhere else." Mm. You know, so that's like a thing that's in the back of my head always. Mm. Town as well. Then obviously a nightmare getting a taxi home. Mm. The traffic around town, the road works and all. It's just that's <laughs> a, that's a shit show. Like mm. genuinely. Um, and that's why I don't even go to town to eat, you know, like I, I could go into town and spend a full day in there and record a few videos just like organically, but I just wouldn't want to go in there anyway because it's it's just all over the place, you it know, is. there's too much going on. Do you, do you see it as the place you, you want to like raise family, live going forward or do you like um, looking at looking at Marbella and like winking at it or anything like that or do you see Ireland as like home base forever? I, I'd, l- I'd love to take the jump and I'd love to go to like I lived in I lived in Canada for nine months wouldn't be rushing back to Canada because of mm. the season sort of thing but I'd love to experience Australia whether it be for two months six months a year or so but home is here yeah home is here are you uh do you think because you were an only child that you you ended up forging like much deeper friendships with your mates like they become ah definitely your, your siblings like absolutely 100 percent. you have a core group of friends shout out to the core four Darren, of course, Darren, I'd be lost without Darren recording on on a day today. So um, that, that's that, that's Darren's Darren's role. That's Darren's job. Yeah, that's Darren's full time job. Dazzler, like yeah, because they have uh, every single. I, I can't fucking listen to a voiceover without uh, it. Like shut up there, Darren. Like, yeah, I like something in the back, and I'm like, who is this mass stranger like coming um, in? Yeah, we lost, we lost without Darren, wouldn't I? He's crying over there. But it is it like <laughs> I, I'm sure like running the game by yourself doing all that. It it would get like I even had we had Cassie Stokes on the one of the other podcasts I produce, and she shoots it on a tripod the whole time. She talks about the difficulties you can have with oh, that man, when you don't. Yeah. Tough game. Yeah. Have you ever seen Jay Cavanagh's videos? Yeah, yeah. Like how many times yeah. did he move Kay, that camera? Kay, Casey Neistat, like. Oh my god! Like the camera moves here. The camera's in the back of the car. The camera's in the front of the car. The camera's in the corner. I was like, Jamie, that's Jamie Neistat, like. Yeah. He's a he's an animal man. Yeah. He's a, he's a true animal, and we had him on the podcast. He was my first guest back in Ireland. We yeah. Great episode, man. Really nice. You should listen to that. Listen yeah. to some of my fucking content. I will, yeah, man. Jesus I will. Sorry, sorry, what sorry. Di- what am I doing this for? <laughs> Fuck. I don't even care anymore. Uh, no, but it had a. Do you have? Would you say like even with your parents and stuff now? Do they understand what you're what you're doing for work and where you're? Absolutely, yeah. They they understand fully, fully supportive. Yeah. At the start, at the start, they were like, "Where are you going with this? Yeah, where yeah, are you yeah. going?" Okay. And um, obviously when COVID came around, it kind of obviously I think everyone that was in social media got a massive boost to kind of or a kick up the hole more so to pass the time mm. and create more and then it really took off from there so now they're fully backing it and mm. i'm very happy you know very positive about me do you remember this is just funny do you remember you know uh do you remember you you we have a, a previous history uh with what? uh you fucking had sex with my girlfriend no uh <laughs> my uh you know bloom on the hair products yes that's me no way yeah that's my i was the guy who reached out to you and sent you hair products we did over things. to toronto yeah no. no were you in toronto at that time i think i was in toronto yeah oh you might just got back but got i back, I, yeah. I, sent, I sent them to your, your guy and st- is that still going still me yeah still going now i'm the i'm the content manager and social media manager there and you give like, me a bit of work out of yeah i've loaded i've loaded you want some fucking shit absolutely we'll have absolutely. a chat we'll have a chat for this we need absolutely. funny enough we need ugc creators so that'd be key oh happy days uh, let's turn it around quickly yeah, you know no really, like just making business <laughs> i'll do it here making business moves um for for twenty twenty four like this year, what's what's your number one focus? My goal from this year, getting the house last year, is to just enjoy this year to the max. And um, I've been to Dubai, I've been to Fort Ventura, I've been to Madrid, 
I want to get myself out of this country as much as I can this year and then regroup the following year. Mm. I've now like really deep plan. Of course I save, we save an awful lot of money week in, week out. Well, I don't save an awful lot of money, but I'm, I'm strict on how I save, mm. I'm strict on my spending, but this year is to enjoy myself. I went through enough stress and I, I got late of getting the mortgage thing. We got approved and I went over the line and I was like, right, that was too much. And I said to myself, once I get this over the line, I am letting the hair down a little bit and enjoy myself, you know? Do you want to talk about where, where you where you ended up buying a house or anything like that? You, know, you don't want to get the area yeah, out there? Yeah, no, I'll say where I got a house. Yeah, my mum's mum died um, and she passed away. And obviously the house is only around the corner from my mum's house. Okay. A handy, mm. handy. Mm. Um, so location was, obviously situation was absolutely devastating yeah. for the family. Obviously. But um, the house then went into rebate. So mm. obviously we had to wait nine months after she passed to actually get the house. Mm. So that put pressure on us because we had just got approved. Mm. So I bought the house with myself and my cousin between us, mm. you know? So I bought them off, off my, my Nana's family, like my Nana's like sons and daughters. Mm. So that house went into rebate and like it, we, we got approved. And then the rebate was like, we were approved till the end of October. Yeah. And rebate finished at like this, like this the, like 20th of October. So it was like right a week. And then it, after we got approved, I was like, I, we, I started spending. Yeah. I was like, right, the savings gone. Like, let's start spending away here. So there was an awful lot of pressure on that end. But um, yeah, it's just, it's in Dublin, it's Northside. It's not a forever home, but it's most definitely a great investment for both of us. And to keep it in the family is, is quite special. I'm, I'm about to move into my childhood home again. Yeah. We uh, we kept the house when my, my, my parents separated. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when they when they separated, we kept the house. We kept it when we moved to Dundrum, as posh as it gets. Uh, we kept the house in Knockline, so we're gonna move back there. Me and my missus are gonna move back there and potentially set up shop there. So really? like, you're, you're, the family you're, you're preaching the choir. Yeah, I think so. Fuck yeah, I think so. My, all my mates are having kids, man. Yeah, really. Two mates having kids. One of them just had a kid. Or not just had a kid. Sorry, the baby's due. Baby's due oh, any fuck. day now. Any Sh- day. They had a baby shower out. last week, so I'd say any day. I'd say yeah. any day. Now, great yeah. name, Sam. A great uh, male or female. <laughs> very very solid name. Uh, a hero's name. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's mad. I'm I'm in that phase now where I've got. My mates, I just want to go for coffee and they come in, they've got prams, prams and shit. You know? It's wild. Yeah. And you're man. raring to go for a few points then after? I am, yeah, always, yeah. always. But like there is, I, I, I can't wait to be a dad, man. I, I kind of love the, I, I, I'm looking forward to that period. Yeah, like, I am as well. I, I just don't, well. I don't want to jump in too quickly. And so like both of them have been like, hey, listen, there's no rush. When like they've had kids and they go, listen, it's fucking, it's tough. Like, yeah. So you need to have. And it's the pressure then of the backing as well of having mm. the kid and make sure the kid is going to be stable. As you're going to be stable, you're still going to have to balance the life. You're going to be able to look after the kids financially. Yeah, you're, you're, like you're, 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 I feel like your parents will row in 100%. Really? Yeah. yeah I Please feel, God. I feel like your mom will be like, yeah, throw them in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got another one coming, man. <laughs> well, I've rated it. It was towards the end We're of the We're up year. to six. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I feel like, um, do you feel like in terms of parenting and stuff like that, wild concept, but, uh, in terms of like raising a kid now in this kind of generation, what do you think about like phones and shit like that when kids are growing up? Are you going to have to police that a bit and find the balance between it? Find the balance definitely as well. But I, it's hard because you don't want it like, obviously the, you want to make sure he has the right group of friends first. Mm. Um, and then just, yeah, just keep track of the phones. I think there's an awful lot going on with bullying online with the phones and then obviously all sorts of other stuff going on. But um, you don't want to be the only one, the only parent not letting them have a phone and not letting them have a phone till a certain age and stuff like that. So it's just being very strict mm. from the get-go of what's right and what's wrong and mm. just making sure they're very clued in mm. of kind of what's going on. It's, it's, it's a ton of pressure. I didn't think about, like, when was the last time when you were nine, nine up to fucking 15, like when you were a kid, when were you thinking about sexuality and shit? I wasn't thinking about girls and shit till I was about 13, 14, 17. That's because you're like, from the South Side, man. No, no, we get chicks. <laughs> I get it. Man. You guys know. You guys know we do absolutely fine over here. I'd say the age. What did you say? Nine to 15? But no, but like, do you remember just when, like, I wasn't worried about, like, kids can go on TikTok now and see just se- mad sexualized shit. But when yeah. I was younger, like, someone might have porn in a folder on their, their, block phone that the real blurry thing yeah, you're like, yeah. oh whoa when you're like 12 yeah. but you're not seeing like full hd quality whatever the fuck you want to see dwarves and all the crazy shit going on <laughs> like you genuinely like they you see the most mad shit and it's just mad to think your kid if they have a phone they can just be like it's like when, like when we were like say when you were 15 having the phone it's like that just been bought back i'd say like three years to this like yeah. day and age but now. even we weren't seeing that shit you might see a parrot like a no pair of tits and no. be like whoa no no not i don't, that, I don't, not I don't, that I don't like them sure you wouldn't be really, i wouldn't have wouldn't have a phone yeah you know i remember that period of like when everyone's about 14 they'd have a ton of folders on their phone and they'd have one porn video hidden inside like 15 different folders so if your ma came trucking through it you'd have to know <laughs> you have to know the way Which through ones it. to get rid of yeah they'd be like i don't go in it's just games it's just, <laughs> it's just games um a question we're, we're f- fucking crazy enough we're about to wrap up man um this is flown the uh a question i like to ask all the guys i have on yep. is as an entrepreneur 
What, what would you say your biggest strength and your biggest weakness is as an entrepreneur? Weakness, um, it'd be up to time management, I'd say for myself. Mm. Time management and dealing with stress. Mm. And then along with like, no, like time management and planning, I'd say. Sometimes I don't know what direction I'm going and where I'm going. As you said, what I did, what I did today, like it's just chaotic. Mm. So that, like that's, I'd, I'd like to be able to deal with that a little bit better as a pro and as a con. You know, to be able to just understand where I'm going, plan the days out in advance. But before I don't, what I'm doing, I don't really know how that, how that's possible because yeah. you don't know where you're going. You don't know if you're going south side, you don't know if you're going to dock, you don't know if you're going swords, you don't know. I, I know if you're going not, south side. Of course, yeah, I know. of course. Uh, they have, it's interesting you say that everyone's, everyone's pretty much said the same shit, man, to be yeah. honest. Like, I, I think the best thing with me doing this podcast, I get to talk to a load of successful people in different areas. Luke Joyce is going to do a couple million quid his business this year, doing really well. Yeah, He's yeah. saying the same shit. Yeah. I need, I was like, I don't know which way I'm going. There's yeah. shit coming on over here. Everyone seems to, no one's been like, no, I'm pretty solid all around. Like yeah. everyone's feeling the same stuff. So and then when, you, when you speak to someone else, that's like a really successful entrepreneur or whatever, mm. and you speak to someone higher than you mm. and they say, just step back and have a look at it. And I'm like, how do you do that then? Like, how do yeah. you just step back? And like, do you take a few days off and step back? Because I can't do that. I can't take days off. Like, your, your phone will be blowing up. Exactly. Or no, and so in my head, I'll be spinning saying, I need to do some work. I need to do some work. I've got a burrito up here waiting to be eat. <laughs> get up here. Uh, you probably get this fucking question like mad. So I'm not going to ask it to you in, in the same way. But what food places, let's say in the last, let's say even this year, what food places stood out to you and been like, this was a really great experience? Obviously, you have a ton, but is there one where you were like, oh, this is something I haven't seen as much of that I think yeah. has, has legs? One comes to head straight away, I was saying to my family when I was on holidays, a place called Adobo. Never heard of it. Adobo. It, you'll have to make the trip. Let me know when you're coming over and I'll get it for you. Um, Adobo. It's like a Mexican trailer that's outside. It's on It's on the Malahide Road, so it's over the, over the north side. It's on your way, basically, out to Malahide. But I could say I could say something real posh and be like I used to play cricket out in Malahide. <laughs> Don't tell me you did that as well, did you? Fucking cricketers get fucking cricketers get fucking chicks. I oh, you knew you were posh when you had a lanyard on straight away. Yeah, I tell you, I get right? into the fucking building, man. There's no, they don't have key fobs paying the hole. Anyway, that adobo place, Mexican mm. husband and wife doing it. Love that. And you, you you order your food. There's no just eat. There's no one. You order your food and you wait about half an hour, forty minutes for it. Mm. But there's like no issue waiting for it unless you're absolutely left. But bring a snack with you. But the mm. quality and the standard and the taste of the food is next level. You get the tacos enchiladas, burritos, loaded nachos, yeah. and it's just like the coriander, pick it a go out, mm. pulled chicken, loaded cheese. It is beautiful. Fuck. Honestly. Yeah. And do they have a, in, in terms of like, is that right up your street in terms of food? Or are you, are you kind of like similar to me and kind of like, you love pizzas, burgers, Pizza burgers, burgers all meat, that kind of really, shit. to be honest with you. Do you meat. fuck with fish? I do. I love yeah. fish. Yeah. I'm not mad on sushi though. Yeah. I'm not mad on sushi. I just, it just doesn't appeal to me, you know? Mm. Especially if I go to a sushi place and they give you so many different types of sushi and you're just like, oh, like you're yeah. fucking wasted in there you're like yeah, you have a, yeah. uh, teriyaki chicken you have a rack of ribs or something yeah, here? Yeah. Um, if I ever see you doing a sushi video like <laughs> right, rat me out that shite <laughs> it's just Darren <laughs> just Darren eating them loving them like with chopsticks <laughs> but no that's the only place that comes to mind that I'd really recommend because it's just it's a place that was struggling mm. they're only open Fridays and Saturdays and I went out there did a review for them and I've been back three times already it's it's that good like mm. genuinely it's fantastic what's the uh what kind of what kind of wrap on this? Is there a when you're going into different spots, do you get a ton of like appreciation from the people that you have in in terms of like thank you for coming and like showcasing our work and things like that? Absolutely. Because it's not if, yeah. if you put this into perspective, like the marketing they'd have to do in terms of spend if they're not doing social media marketing and stuff like that. And there's a very limited amount of people they can do that with in Dublin. Yeah. Like there's maybe three guys come to name that they I don't even think they do it to the level you do it. Mm -hmm. And you have multiple platforms to do it on. My voice just broke. Mm -hmm. Uh that like it's this or they go in the paper. Yeah. Or they, they pay for a TV ad, or they try to do their social media themselves. Yeah. And these these people are fucking, as you said, unbelievable, like cooks, unbelievable, like running a business. But maybe they don't have the social they lack media. That side of it. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. So when you come in, are they like, "Wow, well, thank you so much for just showcasing the business a little bit"? Like, do you get absolutely. a ton of that? Yeah, and that's what really gives you a nice, really a, a proper get in the car buzzing when you hear like you should have seen we sold out this last week after you did okay. that, and then a text like. A text goes such a long way. Like you'd be absolutely mm. buzzing. You'd want to screenshot it and put it in your story. Like mm. we had to close early here. So that's what it's all about. And it's yeah. it's help a local. And that's what people always give out to me on, on TikTok saying like, you never give a bad review. Mm. I'm not a reviewer. Like I'm not reviewing the food. I'm showcasing. Service. I'm Service. showcasing the food. And people just can't get their heads around that just because to see people, other people reviewing the food. Mm. If I start reviewing the food, I'm copying someone else reviewing the food. <laughs> so I'm in my own lane here. I'm always going to say something positive about the business because I feel like that. They've started from something here. They see some sort of drive, some sort of passion behind it. Mm. So I'm always going to support that and back down and fair play to them mm. you know wherever it gets them mm. yeah i'm surprised that uh 
in terms of like a long like a long term gig, you do the travel a bit. You go down to different cities. Are you are you are you still ex- like do you try to accept uh, offers from like different places around Ireland to showcase Absolutely. that as much to, as much as you can? Going to Galway tomorrow, down and back, one Fuck, place, one day, one day, down and back. What are you whipping yeah. around in Scott outside? Just, Scott just outside, smooth as smooth as, but I'd say it absolutely hates me. Mm. Yeah, it hates me. I have it a year, and I think there's twenty eight thousand kilometers on it. it won't, I don't even have it a year. I got it for my birthday in August yeah. at last year. Twenty eight thousand kilometers. Do you? If you had like one thing, like do you do you like to splash on? If you were going to splash on something, do you like a nice car? Do you like having um, a couple of nice bit of clothes, little little like no, not clothes, pair of really, shoes, no. yeah, Clo- not really. No, I I, I like my watches. Mm. Um, obviously, I, I love my car. Mm. Um, but it's not it's not too flashy. The car is fucking like, like I've said yeah. to Luke as well. Luke came in big fuck off Mercedes, yoke a big Jeep thing, but he had a tent box on the top, and he's like, I need this for work. Like, yeah, so I I wouldn't even see that as if if you're a fucking scientist and you're driving a Lamborghini, you're like, yeah, you. Man yeah. likes a car, yeah. But it, uh, no, when it's for work, I'd need a smooth ride down Galway up and back same day, man. Exactly. In my, in my in my in my Honda Civic. Oh, stop! Do you want to swap? Oh, that thing's on its last legs. But yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It, uh, no man, it's 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 been fucking great chatting to you. Man. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Flew in. I loved every second of it. Thank you so man, much. Man, every inch, of, every inch of an hour, man. We're we're going back into it, lads. Thank you so much for listening. It's all in the hips. I appreciate you coming. We're we'll round to the, round in the end of season five, folks. So just fucking get involved and subscribe to the channel. Really. What am I doing this for? Yeah? What am I doing? <laughs> Subscribe. What am I fucking doing? Anyway, Connor, thank you for coming thank on, man. So really much, appreciate Thomas. it. Lads, I'll see you in the next one. Trying to get Wheelow on if he doesn't bail again. Fuck you, Wheelow. All right. Later, folks. Talk to you. Yes, sir.